Hello everyone and welcome to part 14 of my Rams Connected franchise here on Clyde 92 TV and I'm just showing you the injuries for our team going into this game and the Cardinals who are the team we are playing in this episode. We will be playing without Jaquay White and Case Keenum so Terod Taylor has the starting spot in this game and they do not have Patrick Peterson and Sam Acho and they actually had the number one pick in the 2013 draft and they bounced back pretty well from last year. Anyways they spent their number one pick on a halfback his name is Alan Petaway and he actually did not have the starting spot in this game. They're actually starting Beanie Wells over the number one pick and that just does not make sense to me because I do not understand why you would spend the first pick of the draft on a halfback if you're not even going to start him in the first place. And if you saw me going into this game, I'm actually using a new offensive playbook. It is called the Jags run offense. It's kind of like a pistol read option offense that I thought would work well with Terrell Taylor. And the reason why I titled it Jags run is because I have an off camera connected franchise with the Jacksonville Jaguars and my quarterback in that is Terrell Pryor. So I made that offensive play book mainly for his style of play and if you see quarterback Ryan Lindley starting for the Arizona Cardinals I don't know what happened to Carson Palmer I'm assuming he's on a different team at this point and they started off this game really well they're using Brian Quick who we traded to them earlier in the season now they're running Beanie Wells right up the middle and Beanie Wells was just killing us this game him and Larry Fitzgerald were the two main guys we had to watch out for and we could not contain them now on first and ten Lindley will be throwing the ball he's thrown it to the right side to Larry Fitzgerald who gets over one defender hits over another and it takes three guys to knock this guy down. It was a 20 yard gain on his first reception of the game. Now on first and 10, Beanie Wells is getting the ball and I completely mess up that tackle with Cortland Finnegan. I run away from him and he gets all the way to the 20 yard line and they are already at the 20 yard line just two minutes into this game. Now Lindley is finding Swoop on the left side who gets to the 11 yard line. On second and goal they have it at the 4 yard line. They're going to be giving it to Beanie Wells. He runs outside and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown Cardinals. They take an early 7 nothing lead. Lindley is happy and our defense has not been producing well at the start of this game. We will now get the ball on the assuming kickoff. We have Chris Givens and Tavon Austin back to receive the kick. Tavon Austin is the one bringing back the kick. He's running to the right side. He's going to cut over to the left. He bounces off one defender, gets hit, and he fumbles the ball. The Cardinals pick it up, and they now have a chance to take a two-possession lead at the very beginning of this game. A terrible play by our special teams at the start of this game. Now Ryan Lindley's back on third and goal. I even have the defensive lineman back trying to stop their receivers. They get the touchdown anyway. That will make it a 14-point game. The Rams have fallen into a hole early in this game and it will be hard for us to dig ourselves out of it. Right now on first and 10, we're doing a screenplay to Mike Williams, who is just such a fast player on this team. He's running out to the left side. He gets the first down. That will set up our next play on the 38-yard line. I'm doing an audible to a quick slants play. I see Michael Floyd wide open on the left side. He gets the ball and gets the first down before being hit out of bounds at midfield. Michael Floyd is making big plays up against this old team. Now on third and four, I'll be rolling out to the right side with Terod Taylor. I see that Chris Givens is wide open. I throw it to him and he doesn't even try to catch the ball. So that will force us to give the Cardinals the ball. Now on second and eight, they have it at the 22-yard line. They call for Beanie Wells up the middle. He spins past McDonald, and it is open field. Stewart's going to try to catch him down, and he's running after him, and he gets him at the 28-yard line. Three plays later, it will be fourth and seven on the 26-yard line. The kick is up, and it is good. The Cardinals now have a 17-point lead. I know we came back from a 14-point lead last week, but that extra three points make a pretty big difference. Now we have Chris Givens back on the following kickoff, bringing back the kick. Hopefully, he will not do a Tavon Austin. Did. He's running outside to the right. He is able to cut the corners on some of the defenders. There's only one Cardinals player to beat, but he is hit down at the 27 yard line. That will set us up to at least score and narrow down the Cardinals league and maybe get back into this game. We're doing a screen pass to Jaquiz Rogers on the right side. He gets the ball and he will run and get the first down at the 16 yard line. Definitely one of the biggest leaders on this team, especially since we've had so many quarterbacks over the past couple years. Now on 39, we're going to try to get a touchdown and narrow down their lead to 10, but Terod Taylor gets sacked trying to extend the play. That will make it fourth and 20. We're definitely going to kick a field goal in this situation. Greg Zerlana is out. The kick is up and good. That will make the lead only 14 points now for the Arizona Cardinals. They now have the ball on the 20-yard line. They will be running Beanie Wells to the right side. He's running and he finally gets hit in the backfield. It's about time the defense got some running stops because they've been playing just terribly up to this point in the game. On 4th and 16, the Cardinals will be forced to punt us the ball. We have Tavon Austin back. After that terrible opening kickoff, he's trying to redeem himself. He doesn't get that many yards and we will be starting our next drive on the 47-yard line. We're going to run Jaquiz Rogers right up the middle.
middle, and he is not having as good of a season as he did last year, definitely because of the difficulty boost, but he's still producing for this team. Now we're doing a screen pass on second and 10 to Jaquiz Rogers. He will run out to the left side, and he will pick up the first down, and he's going to keep going, try to get into the end zone, but he's hit down at the 14-yard line. One thing I realized in this game is that out of all the quarterbacks we've played with in this connected franchise, it seems that Terod Taylor seems to work best with Jaquiz Rogers out of all the quarterbacks, mainly because he's kind of a fast quarterback, and that seems to work well with the fast running backs. Now on second and three, we're going to run the ball with Jaquiz Rogers up the middle, and he gets just one yard short of the end zone, so that will bring up first and goal on the one yard line, and we're just going to do a QB sneak with Terod Taylor in this situation. He gets into the end zone, the first score by the Rams in the second quarter, and we're slowly making our comeback. The score is now 17-10 to 10. after being down by 17 in the first quarter. The Rams are slowly getting back into this game. The Cardinals will now get the ball at the 20 yard line on first and 10 with four minutes left in the second quarter. They're doing a draw play to Beanie Wells, who does that thing again where he runs six yards with the player on his arm. They should definitely get rid of that animation. Now on second and three at the 27 yard line. Lindley is back. He's passing. And look who is wide open across the middle. Out of all the receivers that should be wide open, Larry Fitzgerald should not be that guy. Luckily for us, Cortland Finnegan chases him down and he's down at the 17 yard line. Now after the two minute warning, they have it on third and four. They're passing it to Fitzgerald who does not pick up the first down. His feet do not stay in bounds. So they will bring out the field goal unit and try to make it a 10 point game. The field goal is up and good. So the score is 20 to 10. And the worst team last year is beating the best team last year. That's something you would not predict seeing in 2014. So now we have Tavon Austin back, bringing back the kick. He's going to take it out to the left side. That always seems to work when you run outside and he's going to keep going. He gets past one defender. It's only one guy to beat at this point. Let's see if he can get past him. He's running at the 10 yard line, the five, and he is hit down at the four yard line, setting up great offensive field position for us to score and make it only a three point game. Rodgers is giving the ball. He's running out to the left side and touchdown Rams. The score is now 17 to 20. So after allowing 17 points at the start of this game, the Rams have come back, scored 17 points and only allowed the Cardinals to score three. The Cardinals will now get the ball with a minute left in the first half of this game. On third and nine, Lindley will be passing obviously in this situation. He's airing it out to the left side and that was nowhere close to any of the wide receivers. I thought that was intentional grounding to avoid the sack, but here with 55 seconds left, they will be punting us the ball. Tavon Austin is back receiving the punt. He will run to the right side, cut over to the left, and the left side of the field is left wide open. He's going to run and try to get some good yards out of this, and he steps out of bounds at the 32-yard line, setting up good field position for the Rams to the point where we can actually tie up the game before halftime. On 39, Terod Taylor's back. He's throwing it to the left side, and Tavon Austin drops the wide open pass. If we had that, we would have had the chance of taking the lead before the end of the half. We will have to send out Greg Zerline, who gets the field goal, and your final score going into the second half of this game will be 20-20. to Now, at the start of the second half, it will be 30 and six and one thing that is really good about the Jags run playbook is how I can run with Terod Taylor in it and that is something I wasn't really able to do with the normal St. Louis Rams playbook. Now on first and 10 we will be running the ball with Jaquiz Rogers. He takes it and cuts up the middle before being hit down at the 47 yard line. Now on fourth and one I'm going to opt to go for it and do that QB sneak with Terod Taylor. He gets it and that will set us up at the 42 yard line. So the Rams slowly but surely are making a drive upfield and we could take this league going into the fourth quarter. Here I'm doing a read option play with Terod Taylor. I take it and get just two yards away from the first down marker. Now on second and two, we're doing a quick slants play and Terod Taylor gets sacked in the backfield. That's a loss of 10 yards and that takes us out of field goal range. So now on third and 12, we're going to need to do a desperation pass downfield to get that first down. Terod Taylor's back. He's throwing and it is intercepted. Terod Taylor's first interception as a St. Louis Ram. The Cardinals will now start their drive on the 42 yard line and I'm sorry, but for some reason there was a glitch in the video file and they did a deep bomb downfield and got a touchdown in that play. It took only one play for them to get the touchdown, but I lost the video file, so I could only show you the celebration there. On the 25-yard line, we're finding our tight end on the right side, who gets just two yards away from the first down marker. Now on third and two, we're going to try to run the ball with Jaquiz Rogers. He goes to the right side, and that was just a bad decision by me. He gets hit down, and he does not pick up the first down. Now on second and inches, Lindley's in the shotgun. He's back, and he will be throwing it to the right side to a wide open receiver, a pickup of 18 yards right there. And now on second and three, they will be running Beanie Wells right up the middle. He completely trucks over Stewart right there and is hit down at the 43 yard line. He already has 120 yards in the first three quarters of this game. We are not doing a very good job containing him. Now Swope is getting another ball and he gets it to around the 30 yard line and the Cardinals are making a drive downfield. They're going to try to make it a two possession game right now. Lindley's fine. Corliss on the right side. James Laurinaitis dives and misses the receiver so he gets into the end zone. The score is now 34 to 20 and again we are down by 14 points and it's going to be hard to come back again for the second time in this game down by more than two touchdowns. Now on second and 13, we're going to be throwing the ball downfield. Terod Taylor's rolling out, and he throws it across the middle to Tavon Austin with a great catch. He's running downfield.
field, and he is hit down at the 23-yard line. His first reception of the day for 51 yards. Now on third and six, Terod Taylor is back. We're going to be passing in this situation. He's thrown it to the right side to Tavon Austin again. His second reception of the game, one for 50 yards, and the second one for the touchdown, coming up big at the end of this game. So that will make it only a seven-point lead going into the fourth quarter now. The Cardinals have it on first and 10 at the 20-yard line. They're going to be running Petaway, the number one pick of the draft, to the left side who gets hit in the backfield. He is trying to prove that he is the number one pick and maybe even steal the starting spot from Beanie Wells. And he's doing it now with that spin move, getting just two yards away from the first down marker on third and two. They convert on third down, making it first and 10 at the 30-yard line. And Lindley has so much time in the pocket. What is the defensive line doing? And Petaway is wide open on the right side, who is hit out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Petaway may not be the best rusher as he's shown, but he is getting some good yards receiving. Now Lindley is back on second and 10. He's thrown it to the right side and it is intercepted by Janoris Jenkins. He's getting the team back in the game and we have a chance right now to get a touchdown and tie up the game. At the 47-yard line, we will be doing a quick slants play. Terod Taylor is rolling out to the left side and he's finding Tavon Austin again. Tavon Austin coming up big down the stretch. He is 80 yards off of just three receptions in the past quarter. Now on third and six, Terod Taylor is back. We will be throwing it to the far left side and he overthrows Tavon Austin that time, making it fourth and six at the 32-yard line. I don't want to go for it in this situation. Instead, we settle with the field goal. It is up and good. Greg Zerline makes it just a four-point game. The score is 34-30. to The Cardinals now have the ball on the 19-yard line on second and 11. We're bringing the pressure onto Lindley. He's thrown it to the right side on the run to Larry Fitzgerald, and I missed the tackle with the defender. He gets all the way to the 46-yard line, and I should have stopped him way before that. He already has 100 yards in this game. On third and seven, Lindley is throwing it across the middle to Fitzgerald, who is wide open again. I have no idea why this guy keeps getting so wide open. He has 120 yards on the game. On first and 10, they have it at the 36-yard line to Larry Fitzgerald, who falls just one yard short of the first down marker. If they can convert this first down, that will be the game. Lindley is pitching the ball to Petaway, who will run to the right side, and he is hit down at the 30-yard line, making it fourth and three. The Rams will now have a chance to tie up the game after this field goal. It is up and good, so the Rams are now going to need to do the two-minute drill. We need to go downfield and get a touchdown in order to tie up this game and put it into overtime. On first and 10, Terod Taylor is back. He will roll out to the left side, and he's going to take the ball himself. He's going to cut the corner on that one defender, and there's only open field ahead of him. He's at the 20-yard line, the 10, the 5, touchdown Rams. The game is tied at 37. After being down the entire game, Terod Taylor runs, I think, more than 50 yards and gets the touchdown, and he's spiking the ball right in front of that Cardinals defender's face. He is pumped after that touchdown, and you can see the Cardinals defenders know that they could have just blown the game. He's even pumping up the crowd after that. There was one problem with getting that touchdown so early, and that is that the Cardinals are going to have 2 minutes and 20 seconds to score right now. So after the 8-yard gain by Petaway, the Cardinals have it on 2nd and 2. Lindley is throwing it to the left side to, of course, Larry Fitzgerald, who is down at the 42-yard line, and we need to stop this team right now. We cannot lose this game after all we've been through with all the amazing plays from Tavon Austin and Terod Taylor. So now on 1st and 10 at the 42-yard line, Lindley is throwing it to Larry Fitzgerald again. They did the same play two times in a row, and our defense could still not stop it. Now on 2nd and 10, Lindley is back and he will be throwing it in the situation. He's finding his receiver on the left side who gets just inches away from the first down marker, making it 13 inches right here. And this is the game at this point. If we don't stop him here, they're going to win. They give it to Petaway and he falls down. He does not convert it. So we call timeout and they will bring out their field goal unit to kick a field goal from the 37 yard line. The kick is up and good. Allen Petaway playing like a bust in this game, not converting on two plays that would have put away the game for the Cardinals. Now on first and 10, the Rams have it at the 34 yard line. Terod Taylor is back. He's thrown it to the right side. To Tavon Austin, again, another big play by him. We get it at the 48-yard line, getting closer and closer to field goal range. Now, at the 48-yard line, we're giving it to Chris Givens, who's running up the field, and he gets us into field goal range. Now, here's the tough decision for me. Do I go and try to get a touchdown, or do I just settle with the field goal? And I think I'm going to go up the field a little bit, and if we get close enough, we're going to go for the touchdown. So, Jaquiz Rogers brings us within the 10-yard line. Now, on second and goal, we're going to try to pass the ball. We're out of timeout, so we have to go to the end zone. Terod Taylor's throwing it to the end zone, and Tavon Austin drops the ball. They call a timeout, and this is our last chance to get into the end zone. If we don't get this, it'll go into overtime. Trod Taylor's rolling out. He sees Tavon Austin, and it is intercepted. No! We lose the game on an interception. We had a drive going all the way downfield. Terod Taylor was playing great. The whole offense was running well, and we lose the game on an interception in the end zone. A crushing blow for this Rams team, and that's saying it lightly. So the St. Louis Rams and the Arizona Cardinals will both be 2-2 two and two now and are tied in the division. It's so frustrating knowing that we should have won this game. We could have at least put it into overtime.
overtime. Plus, Tavon Austin dropped the first touchdown pass in the end zone that would have won us the game. And then it gets intercepted with a diving interception. Like, things like that. It's just bad luck for the Rams. Not only that, but now the Cardinals will be the number one team in the division because they beat us. Here is your GMC Never Say Never moment of the game. And surprisingly enough, it is not the interception in the end zone. It is actually Terod Taylor's run upfield to tie the game up. And it was a great play by the Rams. But after looking at it, it's just so bad that we had this amazing play in such an amazing game and we lost in it. It's going to be even more difficult to come back next week with the next episode and try to win after barely losing this game. You can see Oscar Wiggles trying to make his players feel better, but they're just so crushed after that game. Here are your final game stats, and we actually got beat in every single category. And this is the very first time in this series where our opponent does better than us in every single statistic. So in season two of this series, I have agreed to play every third game, so we will be simming the rest of this week and the next two weeks. So in week five of the regular season, we play the Detroit Lions, and we try to beat them. We're both two and two at this point in the season, but we actually end up losing to them in week five, making us two and three on the season, which is pretty surprising. In week six, we play the one and three Seattle Seahawks, and I have no idea how they are one and three in this season because they're so much better than that in real life. Anyways, we end up beating them, pushing our record two, three, and three. I am showing you the standings at this point in the season, and the Cardinals are actually the number one team in the NFC West, which I thought was pretty surprising. Next episode, we will be playing the Cleveland Browns, and I'm pretty confident we're going to win that game. So I hope you guys had a fun time watching this video. Make sure you go to my video I posted, I think, around three weeks ago. It's basically a video asking you guys which team I should play as in my NBA 2K14, my GM. I give you guys around eight options, and you guys get to pick out of that eight. Just leave a comment underneath the video, and in two weeks, I will go to that video, tally up all the votes in the comments, and decide from there which team I will play as in that series. And I hope you guys have a great day. God bless you guys.